Hello viewers, trust you're doing good. Welcome to another episode of a cohort's blog weekly review of trending stories. Yes, this is a cohort's blog weekly review of trending stories where we bring to you the juiciest and trending stories of the week as usual as it is hot. So sit back as I bring to you the highlights of this episode. NLC Shams meeting with FG begins two day warning strike. Tinumbu government questions Gabon coup leaders interim presidency. Russia announces free grain supply to six African countries. FG accelerates support for farmers, vows to combat soaring food prices. Sonwolu joins inaugural ride of Lagos Blue Line. Sonwolu vows to take over medical expense of Lagos boy with missing intestine. A Redo LCDH chairman advocates engaging youth in summer programs to curb social vices. Tatra slams organizers of Eddie's Award for hosting show in the U.S. Ayoyemi and Taiwo committed a lifetime together. And now let's get into the details of the stories in full. The Nigeria Labour Congress, NLC, on Tuesday, 5th of August, began a two-day warning strike after shunning a meeting with the federal government over increasing hardship and suffering across the country caused by the removal of fuel subsidy. Now, this came as the Minister of Labour and Employment, Simon Lalong, on Monday warned that the strike will worsen the plight of ordinary Nigerians and urged NLC to shelve the action. Now, the NLC had on Monday given a notice of a two days warning strike to protect the excruciating mass suffering and improvement experience around the country, threatening a total and indefinite shutdown of the economy within 14 working days or 21 days after the warning strike if government did not take steps to address the hardship experienced across the country. Oh, sincerely, is this strike really necessary? Well, I just think the government should do what they ought to do in order for this strike not to cripple the economy completely. The Nigerian government, led by President Bola Hamer Tinumbu, has condemned the inauguration of General Brice Nguema as the interim president of Gabon. Now, the government said that the inauguration is unacceptable and that it undermines the democratic process in Gabon. Gabonese General Nugwema, who last week led a coup ending 55 years of rule by Bongo Dynasty, was sworn in on Monday as interim president. Now, in a statement on Monday signed by the spokesperson of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Francisca Homayuli, the Nigerian government called for the immediate return to democratic constitutional order in Gabon. The government stated that coup only served to compound rather than address any perceived problems, saying that the coup in Gabon is not acceptable. It also stated that the Tinumbu government is committed to partnering with other democratically elected governments in Africa to sanction perpetrators of unconstitutional change of government. Now, this is a wake-up call for leaders that were democratically elected. Let the leaders do what they ought to do in order to avoid stories that touch because we wouldn't want military to take over. Russian President Putin stated on Monday that Russia was nearing a deal that would secure free grains for six African countries after the UN brokered Black Sea grain deal collapsed in July. After pulling out of the deal, which aimed to ensure safe grain exports via the Black Sea, Putin has been eager to allay African fears about the impact of the deal's collapse on food security. Now, speaking at a press conference with a Turkish counterpart, Putin said, we are close to completing agreements with six African states. He also stated that the country would supply the grains and carry out logistics free of charge, adding that delivery would begin in the next couple of weeks. Ukraine and Russia have both announced plans to ship grain outside of the grain pact, which the UN has claimed is critical to the world food security. Putin stated that his administration was ready to return to the deal as soon as restrictions on its own exports we are lifted. Well, let's hope the restrictions are lifted so these free grains would get to the African countries. 
The federal government has reiterated its commitment to ensuring availability and accessibility of food items to all households in the country. Now, to actualize this food sufficiency agenda, farmers in the 36 states and the FCT will be receiving 33,000 metric tons of raw granular potash, which will be used as fertilizers. Granular potash or potassium is an essential element for plants that improves water uptake, carbohydrate storage, and frost disease resistance. It also strengthens the standing power of cereals, reducing the risk of lodging and counteracting the damaging effect of excessive nitrogen. The decision to disburse the farm material led to the inauguration of two committees, namely logistics and blending, by the Minister of Agriculture and Food Security, Abubakar Kiari. Kiari said it is part of the measures to address the food security emergency in the country in a statement signed by the Chief Information Officer of FMAFS, Erema Antonia, on Monday. He also noted that two of the raw materials, urea and limestone, can be found locally while other materials were imported. Now, the DAP is from Morocco while the potash is from Europe. Well, this is a good one because it's going to lessen the icon price of foodstuff in the market because the country is presently going through a lot when it comes to feeding. The Lagos State Governor, Governor Babajide Sonwolu, has joined the inaugural ride of the state's Blue Rail Line. According to a reputable media, the managing director of Lagos Metropolitan Area Transport Authority, Lamata, Mrs. Abimbola Akinajo, Heli announced that the Blue Rail Line will begin full commercial operations on September 4. Now, Akinya just said Governor Babajide Sonwolu will take the inaugural ride by 9 a.m. on September 4 before other passengers begin to ride, which he actually did. Now, the former president, Muhammadu Buhari, inaugurated the rail line in January and it has since been on test run. Then again, the red line is still Absolutely. So, can you run us Sometimes the red line is going to be completed before the end of this year. Amen. By the grace of God, we are about 95, 96% in all of them. So, you know, for the red line, we have over of bridges. We have, so, we're going to be start commissioning the bridges by the end of this month so that passengers and vehicles can start moving on those bridges from, you know, Ikeja Long to Yaba Bridge to uh, Temeta Bridge to um, Mushi Bridge and all of them. You know, so we're going to open the bridges for vehicles to start moving on top. So that will begin the signalization that red line is coming up. Right, we're almost completing the retrofitting of, of the trains, and you know, um, they have also started recruitment of, of, of train operators, you know, of train managers, and, and, and all of that. Then we will start the unveiling of the various stations themselves. You know, and, uh, red line is actually. In my view, actually, it will be bigger than the blue line, right? So it will come. It will. It will certainly come. I'm trying to get everything, all the T's crossed and all the I's dots. This blue rail line is really going to make things easy for the people of Lagos State. Kudos to Governor Babajide Sonwolu for bringing up this initiative, and indeed, Lagos is moving forward. The Governor of Lagos State, Governor Babajide Sonwolu paid a visit to the Lagos University Teaching Hospital, Lassoth, Ikeja, to see the 12-year-old Master Adebola, whose mom made a video about a son that was posted from a private medical facility to the state tertiary facility about an intestine issue. Now, Adebola's mother says the purpose of the video was to seek help from the state government and Nigerians to help save her son. Mr. Governor, after listening to the mother and the medical officers of Lassot, assured Master Adebola and his mom that everything will be done to get him better. This is really, really painful. This little boy does not deserve the pain he's going through right now. Because how can his intestine be missing? And nobody can come out to say this is how it happened, this is where his intestine went to. No! Somebody should be held responsible for this. And God bless Governor Babajide Sonwolu for coming to their rescue. Now let's go straight to a pair community to see what's happening. In a resounding call for youth empowerment, Honorable Monsuru Akinloye, 
chairman of Eredo Local Council Development Area, has emphasized the significance of engaging young people in meaningful activities during the summer break. His Vice Honorable Latif Adesonya conveyed the chairman's remark during the school-based management committee's summer cleaning closing ceremony of RCM Primary School, Mojada Eredo LCDA. Addressing the gathering, Honorable Latif Adesonya commended the innovative initiative of the SBMC, particularly lauding the convener, Elder Olufemi Adeyemi, chairman of SBMC at RCM Primary School, Mojada. He expressed the administration's commitment to supporting educational projects and programs that foster hostility growth among the youth. The Summer Clinic 2023 is the first of its kind summer class program organized by the SBMC leadership of a primary school in Equa Division. When we say catch them young, this is exactly what we are talking about. Because this is a way to keep the youth busy rather than them being idle. Kudos to Eredo LCDA for putting this together. <music> Following the 16th Eddie's Awards ceremony, former Big Brother Ninja star Tacha has queried the organizers of the event for hosting the show in Atlanta, US. Tacha asserted that the award event, which was one of the largest Afrobeat Awards ceremonies, should not have been taken abroad because it was a prominent indigenous award that was supposed to be held here in Nigeria. She said, how is it that the biggest music award show in Africa is being held abroad back to back? Why? What did our colonial master do to us? What is this slave mentality? Guys, is it just me or this is just in and ridiculous? How is it that the biggest music award show in Africa has been held abroad back to back? Like, isn't what did our colonial masters do to us? What is this slave mentality? How does this make sense? I mean, the first time it was held in the US last year, it kind of like made sense. Afrobeat was still getting so much momentum. Our artist was filling up stadiums. Yes, it made sense. But doing it in the US again, a year after, back to back, where's the sense in that? Yes, now, because we are the ones promoting it here in Nigeria. We are the ones voting. Like, have we forgotten that there was a time where BET would not give award to our artists on the front stage? They were giving award to artists backstage. Like, have we forgotten so soon? Even BET, say, Black Entertainment, Kiniko, would not hold your award in Africa, even if we want to cry left and right. Not in SA, not in Nigeria. Anyways, Tacha is correct to some extent. And at the same time, the organizers of this event have their reasons for hosting it in the US. And I'm sure it's for the benefit of our music culture in Nigeria. <music> this one is a love story because Ayayemi and Taiwo committed a lifetime together. The union marked the beginning of a lifelong journey for the couple. Surrounded by the love and blessings of their families, friends, and esteemed guests. Now, this event was a spectacle of religion, culture, and tradition as the parents of both the bride and groom graced the occasion in their beautiful regalia, as in you need to see the way they were looking so beautiful. They reflected the rich heritage of their families. Not only that, the presence of extinct royal dignitaries, including His Royal Majesty, Obaba Batunde Olaogun Ogunlaja, the paramount ruler of Odonofurija Kingdom, Epe, Lagos, added an hair of grandeur to the festivities, emphasizing the significance of this union within the community. Wow, if you were at that event, you would know that love is indeed a beautiful thing. As in... This love, the problem is, it's not just going around. I've always said it, that I am not a potato. Let this love to locate me now. Eh? Actually, the event was a memorable event. And a cohort blog is wishing the couple a happy married life. Congratulations to them. We have come to the end of today's episode of a cohort blog with the review of trending stories. Thank you very much for joining us on this episode. Feel free to drop your comment in the comment section. And please don't forget to like our video. Follow us across all of our social media platforms on Facebook, on Twitter, and on Instagram. And please, if you are yet to subscribe to our YouTube channel, hit the subscribe button now in order to get notified whenever we have new videos for you. Thank you very much once again. Until I come your way next time, I remain Olayinka Olorenshola. Bye for now.